Good day and welcome to Connect, our daily meditation where we connect to God, each other and our own inner selves. Now we read in the Bible that it's good to meditate on the Word of God. So find a comfortable place and inhale slowly. Breathe in peace. Exhale. Drive out anxiety, worries, stress and fear. Now our Bible reading today is out of Matthew 1 and I'm going to read verses 18 and then 22 to 23. The birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. His mother Mary had been promised to Joseph in marriage. But before they were married, Mary realized that she was pregnant by the Holy Spirit. All this happened so that what the Lord had spoken through the prophet came true. The virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they will name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Now, you know, I watched people taking a handful of pills and swallowing them every day because someone said that those pills will make them feel better. They don't have a clue, really, what they're taking. But they are taking the pills because someone said that the pills would help. And yes, even if the guys in the white coats explain it, the majority of people still won't have an understanding. But they take the medicine and they believe in it. Like Jack in a beanstalk who sold his cow for magic beans. So why do you believe it? Because some guy or girl in a white coat tested it. So why don't you believe the virgin birth? If you could trust a smart guy in a white coat, why can't you trust one that is at infinitum smarter? Someone who created the universe. Now, Jesus fulfilled the prophecies of being born by a virgin in Bethlehem as a descendant of David. And what is even more amazing is that he predicted his own death and his resurrection. In the words of B.B. Warfield, we have in Jesus a supernatural man doing a supernatural work, and so he must have come from a supernatural source. And God gave us this sign. And yes, truckloads of babies are born every day. And it's wonderful, but it's natural. It's not a sign. But if a mother had conceived being a virgin and was still a virgin when she gave birth, then that would definitely be a sign, isn't it? And signs strengthen our faith. Now, we can trust Matthew's interpretation of Isaiah 7 verse 14 because it's the same spirit who was at work in both Matthew the disciple as well as the prophet Isaiah. And we know that the Lord promised a sign to the house of David, a virgin bearing a son who would represent the presence of God with his people, God with us, Emmanuel. And so Isaiah 7 verse 14 does not stand in isolation, and it involves much more than the story of Ahaz. And the incarnation of God's Son is basically a sign to the world that God hasn't forsaken His people. He has kept His promise, just as He always does. God had been faithful to His people by coming among them through Jesus just as he promised. And the virgin birth is important, you know, because without it, there would be no salvation for sinners like us. Jesus would have been just like another baby and as such would have shared in the sins of humanity. And if that was the case, 
they know by Bible is not true. And we can't trust it because he couldn't make atonement for our sins. And if Jesus was not a God-man, the perfect and acceptable sacrifice for our sins, then we can't be saved. And we are still in our sins. And then it would imply that all Jesus' teachings are just kind of fake. And if we continue to believe um, them in that case, then we are absolutely silly bellies running around, completely lost and he heading for dream cuckoo land now, isn't it? But if Jesus is the God-man, then his blood shed on Calvary for your and my sins is precious because it's implanted blood from the Holy Spirit. And when Jesus was born, he was fully man and fully God, and his blood could cleanse us from our sin. The point I'm trying to make is that if Jesus was not born of a virgin, then Jesus was not God. He was just like any other ordinary baby. And then, if that's the case, then we are lost in our sins. And our Bible is like a fairy tale, a myth, a legend. And you know, people who have a problem with the supernatural, generally speaking, basically have a problem with God. Because God deals with supernatural stuff. God did it in creation right throughout all the ages. And God said that he will do another supernatural act. And this act will be a sign and so, in a supernatural act of God, he invades space and time and comes as a little baby in a manger. And so, the prophet says has been fulfilled and Jesus was born of a virgin. And he is our promised Messiah and therefore he has the power to save us, change our lives and give us eternal life. Now someone once said that if Jesus isn't your saviour, then Christmas isn't really Christmas to you. It's just a reason to have some parties and family time. So, I guess the bottom line is, what do you believe? And what are you doing with Jesus? Remember, Jesus loves you, and everyone who believes in him has the right to become part of his family. So it's all over to you. The choice is yours. What do you believe? My prayer is that you will make a journey to Bethlehem, that you will read the story again with open hearts and minds, and may you meet with Jesus again and have a closer relationship with him as a consequence. Remember, the prophecies establish his identity. The miracles prove his power. He is the God-man, offering you a personal relationship with him. Let us pray together. Father God, thank you that you gave your son Jesus for me and for all people. Father, help me accept the love that you showed me in sending your son. Father God, help me to know you more. And through knowing you, may I love as you love and be an instrument of your grace, love and peace. I pray this through the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. <music>